Welcome to Cheap Controls. We make videos on things that we struggled with, hoping to help you so you don't. Consider subscribing and hitting that bell. In my last video, there was an issue when I tried to set the upper and lower temperature limits to turn on and off the heater. I'm going to show you an example of the problem, and then we'll go over on how to correct it. You can see when I go to change it, how it goes back and forth between the old numbers and the new number, what I'm wanting to change it to. And that's because the Arduino is trying to overwrite the values on the connection. We set that up so that we would know if there was a lost connection. And it worked fine when I had the updates every five seconds, but when I adjusted them to every second, it doesn't work as well. What I want to do is when it's on this page, I don't want it to do updates from the Arduino. But when it's on the home page, I want it to update those two fields. And then that way I know if I get strange behavior, I can go back to the other page and see if the if it held. Because what will happen is, is if I make the change on the connection, but it doesn't go to the Arduino, the Arduino will override it when I go back to the page. So we still kind of have that. We also have that green box down in the lower right hand corner that also tells us if we lose connection with the Arduino. So I think we'd be in good shape. I'm going to start by showing you something in the Arduino, then I'm going to go back to the next and make some changes, and then I'll go back to the Arduino and update that. If you've been following in the series that I have, one of the first things we did was we set up a standard string to be sent from the next to the Arduino. And we start that string with C colon C. And then if we get that string, if we get a three character string that begins C colon C, then we know we have a command that we have sent. We know it's a proper command. And then we look for a question mark. And if we see a question mark, we know that we have the complete command. We don't really care how long it is at that point. We just know if we see a question mark, we have the complete command. And then after that C colon C, we're looking for three more characters. And that's what's going to tell us what command we are sending or what we want it to do. In this case, we have HIL and LOL to set the high trip point and the low trip point for the heat mat. It doesn't matter the value that comes or the size of the value that comes after those three characters because we can interpret that by getting the length of the string. And you can see in the two lines, the command and the value, that's where we get those two things. So we can send essentially anything from the next gen and interpret that as a command as long as it starts C colon C, has a three character command and then a value, and the value can be text or number, it doesn't matter, and then followed by a question mark. We're going to go over to the next gen now and we're going to set that up. And then we'll come back here and make the changes in the Arduino. This is the main page, and what we currently have is on the pre-initialize, we set the value of that little box in the right-hand corner. But after it's all set up, it does the post-initialize. We're going to add some code in here. And I've put some comments in there, so it, hopefully it makes it easier to understand what we're doing. We start the whole string with C colon C, and then we add LOL or HIL. And then we print a value as text, because what we did on the other pages on the timers is we interpreted the value and covexed it into text. And then we send the question mark. But for this, we can do it as one long string, because we're not trying to interpret a value. When we're on the main page, we're going to send C colon C, and then update 1, UPD for update 1, and then a question mark. And we'll have one equal transmit data from the Arduino, and we'll have zero to tell the Arduino to not transmit data. So now we're going to go over to the other page. And I put the same comments in there. So if you download this code, they'll all be in there. Only on this one, it's C colon C, update UPD, zero question mark. So when we go to each page, it'll send the command. And on the, on the Arduino, all we have to do is look for the command with the same format we looked for the temperature setting commands. And that's all there is to that. I'm going to upload this to the connection, and then I'm going to switch over to the Arduino. So we're going to pick up right from where we left off in the last video on the Arduino side of things. And I'm going to have to add a variable, though. And we're going to call it update hysteresis. 
and we're going to have it set to 1. So that way the initial state will be to send data from the Arduino up to the Nexion. And hopefully that makes sense because we're going to start on the first page on the Nexion, and when that's initialized it, would, it should send a 1 anyway. And then down in this area you can see that we have if command equal HIL and if command equal LOL. We're just going to add another line. So now we just have if command equal UPD update hysteresis equal value dot t to int. And that way we'll take that value as a string and turn it into an integer. But you can see we already have the structure in place because we're already getting a command and getting a value. Now down where we're updating the N0 and N1 with the high temp and low temp values, all we have to do here is put in if statement so that we'll only do it if update hysteresis is equal to 1. So now we're only going to update those values if we're on the initial page. And up here, I forgot to mention, we're also going to print that variable, that serial.println command and value. So we will be able to verify in the serial monitor that we're getting the data. So that way, if we see an inconsistency on the next display, we can go back here and see this. I'm going to upload this and we'll see if we got it. So now we have our next display and our serial monitor. So now when I go to the pages, we should see it say UPD and either a 1 or a 0. It should already be set to 1, so when I press that temp button, it should go to 0. And there we see UPD 0. So now when I press the higher and lower buttons, we shouldn't get that issue. It should just count. And it does seem to work pretty good. You can see we got that one error in there. And that's okay, because it'll just ignore that. I want to make sure that it still functions. So I have it set at 66 and 65. We'll go back to page 1. We should see UPD1 at that point. And we got UPD1. And so now I'll warm up the temperature sensor. And you can see that the, it went off, which is good. And now if it uh, cools back down, the heater should turn back on. Of course, that'll take a little while. So I'm going to adjust the values again, and hopefully they're still sitting at 66 and 65. And now I'm set at 69 and 66. And now I'll time lapse it down to 66. And there you go, we've got it. So it seems to still be working, but now we have the fix for that one problem. I'm going to go back over to the Arduino, and I want to clean something up. One of the nice things of using this format where I pull the command and the value before I do anything is now I can easily add more commands and values. We can also do some things to clean this code up a little bit. In the first couple of videos I separated the strings to make it a lot easier to follow, but I'm going to combine some to get the code a little more compact. And you can see what I've done. Instead of having the page 0 x 0val and the string int temp f and the end characters on separate lines, I've combined them all into one single line. I'm going to do the same thing with the high and low temperature part of it. This just makes the code a little bit more compact. I'm going to do the last part here also. The other thing you can do is you can separate it into files. and I'm going to do that next. You can see here that the folder and the file name are the same, which is what you need for the Arduino. But if you want to have multiple files tied together to break things up, you can add them to that directory. We're going to add two now. We're going to call the first one 
input. And we're going to call the next one delay. Problem is, is it's not recognizing them as Arduino files, so you have to change the extension at the end. When you go to change it, you're going to get this message, but that's okay. We'll just click yes. We're going to do the same thing with the input. We have three files in this, and the Arduino system will consider the top one the main one. I need to go back to the IDE now, close it, and reopen it for the Arduino to see the other two files. So now you can see we've got two more tabs, delay and input. And I'd like to just call it the same as the file name, delay. But the problem is delay is a, is a command in the Arduino IDE. So we can't use that, so I'm going to add function to it. And then on the input, I'm going to do the same thing. Now I have two functions that I can call from the main file. I'm considering the input file the data that comes in from the nection. And that's in this um, if serial 2.available area. So I'm just going to collect all of this. And I'm going to cut it which is just going to leave this empty function in here. And we'll go over to the input and we'll paste it in here. And so now we can call this input function from the main one. We're going to do the same thing with the delay, the asynchronous delay. I'm going to leave that async delay plus equal delay length in there just because that isn't that's part of the the code itself and not really unique to this application, but I'm going to copy the other stuff into the delay file. And now that it's all copied over here, I have to go back to the other function, or to the main function, and call it. And this just makes it work a little bit cleaner. So now our main loop is only this size. So we're really only doing three things within our main loop. We're looking at the serial 2. If there's data available, we collect it. If the asynchronous delay is ready to execute a function, it'll do that. And then we still do that ends with character. This is something I just always include in. So if the nection sends something that I'm not looking for, it'll find it in here and print out an error. Now we kind of do this in the input section. Let's go look at that. Because right now, if the DFD length is greater than 3, and the first three characters are not C colon C, we reset the DFD. So if we were to send an error, or if the next one were to send an error string, or some message that was greater than three characters, it's going to erase it. But if it's less than three characters, we'll still get it. So I'm going to leave it there for now. So just for a quick review, we didn't do a whole lot of functionality on this. We just cleaned up an inconsistency, I guess you could say, where that the N0 and N1 values were being updated as you were trying to change them. And we accomplished this by adding a function that we're sending back to the Arduino that disables that or enables it based upon the page of the nection. And we did that with this print s and setting the UPD 0 or 1 depending on the page we're on. So on page 2 we're on 0, back over to page 1 we're sending a 1. And then in the Arduino we added a couple pages so we can break up the code. which made the loop a lot cleaner. And then for the delay, in the delay, we look at that state of that hysteresis, and if it's 1, we execute the update, and if it's 0, or really any other value, we don't. Now that might be a mistake. I should probably change that to update hysteresis not equal to 0. So in other words, when it sees a 0, it doesn't update it, and in any other state it will because if we add pages or something like that it could change. So you always want it to err on the side of the, what you want. And having that inconvenience of that update when you're pressing it, if an error did happen, is probably better than not being able to update it at all. So I'll think about that and maybe make the change next week. But for now it should be fine. 
Um, next week I'm going to add the real-time clock to the top of the main page. So on the website itself, I'm going to have these boxes for categories. But at any point, you can go here and you can search. And this will search all the videos. So if I wanted all the videos in the 130 range, if you start typing, it'll show you videos that start with 130 or have 13 in them. So you will get some extra videos. But let's say I wanted to see pulse width modulation. You could do that, and that will bring up ones that have pulse width modulation. Or you can be more specific and type in stepper. And it will auto search. You can hit this apply filter button, but it does it as you type it in. And then if you want to see only all the Arduino videos, you click on Arduino. And it, it, it looks up all the ones that have the tag for Arduino on it. Now if I go back to the home page, you can see I'm only up to 154. So I've got to add a bunch of videos into this. I have to add a bunch of videos back into this that I've already made, and I'll, I'm working on that. It takes a little bit of time because I have to do it through a back-end database. I'm changing that so I can make it, it will make it easier on me to load the data. But if you click on a particular video, it will bring up the title. You can watch the video here, or you can click down here and go on YouTube. I'm going to update this. This will be where the description is. Right now it's a little bit clunky. And then below it will be all of the links to the documentation, to the code, or any PDFs I use during it, like images, schematics, anything like that. Once again, I don't have this for very many videos, but I am starting to upload them. So if there is anything specific that you want to see that I don't have the data for, on the home page, if you scroll down, just put your information in here and send it up, and I'll add that particular video a little bit quicker than maybe the others. And I note on here that I take your email and add it to the newsletter. I've never really done that. Um, I usually just reply. If you want to be added to the newsletter, you can do that up top here. Well, that's about it for this video. If you like what you saw, consider giving me a thumbs up, and also consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.